This is Morning Motivation for Educators on the Bee Podcast Network. Learn about all the shows at beepodcastnetwork.com. You'll hear from a variety of formal and informal educators who help put this podcast together. If you'd like to contribute your voice to the show, please go to morningmotivationedu.com to apply. I am Karen Dudek Brannon. I was a school SLP for 14 years where I specialized in language literacy and executive functioning and also held various teaching, leadership, and research roles. Now, I am the host of the De Facto Leaders Podcast on the Bee Podcast Network, where I help school therapists, teachers, and administrators be leaders on their school teams, no matter their job title. One of the biggest challenges that people with executive dysfunction have is that they aren't using self-talk or they're not using self-talk effectively. So this applies to kids who may have things like autism, ADHD, dyslexia, other things that impact their ability to use the mental processes that are required for self-regulation, planning, reading social situations, all of those things that fall under the umbrella of executive functioning. But when we talk about personal development, there is a lot of discussion around the idea of self-talk and taming your thoughts, which is all very important. But there are ways that we can model this for kids And I found that as I describe how to model these things for kids who may need assistance, planning, organizing, interacting with others, regulating their emotions, all of those things that many of the adults say, hey, I wish I would have had some of this information and some of these tools when I was younger. And I think that I could probably use some of this right now. So today I wanted to share the different types of self-talk that I teach people who are supporting kids. And I think this will be something that you can apply to your life as well. So when we're thinking about self-talk, there are two big areas. One of them is self-talk for strategic planning. So when we use self-talk for strategic planning, we are talking to ourselves and thinking, hmm, what am I supposed to be doing right now? What am I supposed to be paying attention to? So we walk into a room and we look around, we start looking for cues in the environment and we start telling ourselves things like, hey, everybody is sitting down right now. I should be sitting in my desk. I should get my workout. I should go through my folders. And we start to think about what we need to do in order to achieve our end goal. This is something that you probably do on your way home from work. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, hmm, it's going to take me 30 minutes to drive home and let me think about all the things that I need to do. Maybe I need to stop and run an errand and how long is that going to take and what do I need to pick up so that I can make dinner for my family? So you're talking to yourself as you're going through your day and that's helping you plan and think about the steps that you need to take in order to get things done. Being able to utilize that self-talk is really key for helping you stay on track and do the things that you need to be doing. It's also key for helping you read situations. So for example, if you walk up to a group of people at a networking event and you want to start a conversation with them, you're probably having a conversation with yourself about how am I going to jump into this conversation? And then as you do that, you're probably thinking to yourself, you know, what was the response to what I just said? So there's the strategy element, but then there's also the additional reflective element of understanding what that means about you. So we not only use self-talk to plan strategically, to self-evaluate, to regulate, but also we use self-talk to draw conclusions about all of these things that we're observing and what they mean. And this can be particularly challenging for kids with executive dysfunction because many of the conditions and diagnoses that cause executive dysfunction make people prone to certain cognitive distortions, such as black and white thinking. Let's say that you wanted to approach a group of people and jump into the conversation And maybe you say something and you're not really sure how it came across. Maybe someone makes a face and you think, well, what do they think about me? And so immediately you are evaluating and you are making whatever you observed 
means something. And there are different ways that you can interpret that. If you have a difficult time interpreting those things, or if you're prone to making assumptions that may or may not be true, that can lead to thoughts that impact your self-esteem. Let's say that you are at a sports practice or doing something that might be challenging. You're going through a learning curve. You're trying something new and maybe you're not successful at it yet. The way that you talk to yourself and reflect on what you did and how successful you were can impact how you feel about yourself. So what are you saying to yourself when you're evaluating? Are you saying things like, okay, uh, that didn't go as planned. What do I need to do in order to do that more effectively next time? Where do I need to adjust? Where do I need to shift? Or are you telling yourself, well, that didn't go well. That must mean that I'm a failure and I can't do this. That didn't go well. That must mean people don't like me. These things relating to self-esteem can be very difficult for kids to navigate if they have things like ADHD because they might be prone to the self-defeating thoughts. So it's really important that we are aware of this so that we can model effective self-talk for them. And also notice that when they're avoiding things, it might be because of these self-defeating comments. So to sum up, the two types of self-talk that we can think about are self-talk for strategic planning and self-talk for self-esteem relating to our thoughts and our beliefs about ourselves. I share in-depth tools that parents and educators can use to support self-talk in the School of Clinical Leadership my program that helps related service providers and other professionals to build the executive functioning skills kids need in order to thrive. To learn more about the program, you can go to drkarendudekbrannon.com backslash clinical leadership. Thanks for listening. And whatever role you have in education, we have a podcast for you at bepodcastnetwork.com. Who among your friends and colleagues needs to hear this message today? Please share it with them right now.